Good afternoon. My name is Wayne Vold. I'm an Industrial Territory Sales Manager for Global Finishing Solutions. And I'm Brian Chaudhry, a Senior Engineer um, for G GFS. Today we're going to be talking about climate and humidity controlled paint spray booths. Question asked a lot. You know, why climate control is required? Who is requesting the climate control for that? Is it the safety people, the paint spec, end user, etc.? Uh, is it temperature required, humidity, and or both of the above? There's a lot of important things that are always asked about that. You know, is it the uh, data sheet from the paint spec that is requiring that, different things like that? Or is it just the customer broadly asking for climate control? And climate control is a very, very broad subject. Um, as you know, Brian, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah, so... The, the differences in, under, I guess, basically having a, an understanding uh, from the end user perspective on what the re true requirements are and that there's a basis on it, that, that there's some due diligence behind um, the temperature and humidity ranges specified for the process. We just need to um, go down a, we need to go down a specific path uh, depending on what those requirements are and and, so, and sometimes it may take some time to evaluate the best uh, solution for your facility. So it's important to understand, uh, you know, really what the requirements are of the process. As a key thing, we need to know where in the United States that, that paint spray booth is going to go. Is it during just the paint, paint process? Is it during the curing process and or both? The coating process and the, the coatings that they are spraying with will, will give us a lot of that detailed information along with where how many gallons they're going to be spraying per hour and things like that. We're going to need to know them detailed questions to get to the next process of it. You know, can we recirculation? You know, cutting that airflow back down um, on some of these costly projects like this. 20,000 CFM of airflow could be a quarter of a million dollar air handling unit alone if it's 100% in, 100% out. If we can reduce that and only do it with 5,000 CFM of air recirculating the rest, you know, it may cut that down to $75,000 air handling unit with the requirements changed to the booth for LEL monitoring, other things that need to be done to a paint spray booth. There are less expensive options out there also at you know, as far as DX cooling or swamp cooler, if only cooling is required. So that's the kind of things that we need to get worked out as far as answering the uh, properly on the RFQ forms so we can turn it over to engineering. Maybe, Brian, you can touch on the DX cooling and or swamp cooler yeah. as options. Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, so, so with uh, sensible cooling where we're just adjusting temperature and, and not really concerned about humidity in the process, um, you can incorporate DX cooling, which is direct expansion cooling. It's, it's similar to what you have in your house uh, that cools your home. Um, and basically uh, what that process does is it cools the air from uh, a warmer ambient temperature outside, and let's just say 80 to 85 degrees, and would cool it to 75, for instance. Um, so we're just take, basically taking the edge off as far as temperature, I'm not really concerned about humidity. Um, another uh, economical way to do, to uh, take a few, a few degrees off uh, higher temperatures is to use uh, swamp coolers or evaporative cooling. Um, those uh, those uh, types of systems are uh, very efficient in um, high altitude climates and, and, and dry climates. Um, so both of those systems um, offer an in introductory level type solution for those processes that require a little bit of temperature, uh, uh, temperature control only. So they're done, that's done relatively efficiently and cost effectively. So there again, it, you know, just adding, you know, in there, some cases uh, adding humidity is a requirement. They need, if there's doing some special zinc sprays, different kind of applications. There again, the process and the coatings determines that. And in some cases, they may have to add humidity. They, uh, they can't get it too low. They need higher humidity to spray a zinc coating of some sort, things like that. There's other applications that that's where the 
product data information is so important and a key factor that we need to know along with where in the United States because requirements for upstate New York compared to California, Washington, Texas, they're all different and, and the ash rays and different things and Brian can touch on that with his uh, PowerPoint presentation. Yeah, so in regards to um, controlling uh, humidity levels, um, we can take a look at um, having an understanding of controlling temperature and humidity uh, within the window. And for instance, if we had a, if we had a, a really, really a basis of understanding that we need uh, from a design standpoint is whether the customer is just looking to uh, have the environment fall within the window. Let's just say, for instance, we're talking about a a range temperature range of 65 to 80 degrees um, that the heating and the cooling system would be sized just uh, just enough so that on the worst case uh, temperature day or the uh, worst case uh, uh, temperature day as far as winter or summer conditions are concerned that the heating system would be sized to get from for instance zero degrees to 65 or the cooling system designed from um, to get the temperature from outside air of 100 degrees down to 80. Just to get uh, to the window um, is uh, basically um, what we call falling within the window. And you can take that to the next level with humidity. Humidity works the same way. If there is a specific range that you're looking for um, that your process requires, for instance, maybe it's uh, 40 to 70 percent relative humidity, Again, we would size our humidifying equipment to get to 40% on the, on the driest, coolest day that you have. And vice versa, on the most humid day of the year, we would design that um, cooling and dehumidification system to get you below 70%. One additional question that did get brought up and does on several occasions was, what's the difference between the modes of climate control aspects for water-based and solvent-based paints? So different coatings and stuff like that. Brian, maybe I'll let you touch on that. Sure. Um, so yeah, the, um, you know, a temperature setting for water-based versus solvent-based paints um, um, typically are between 70 and 75 degrees. It really doesn't matter on the coating. Um, other than on water-based paints, at temperatures above 75, what we found is that users uh, have bet better results um, increasing the, the temperature of the booth about five degrees above the outside temperature. And that's uh, to help burn off the humidity during the high humid days. So, um, but, but as always, you know, the, the, the first place to look for temperature requirements is the tech data sheets on your coatings. Um, another question that came in uh, was uh, a, someone in a humid climate and what humidity, what factor does humidity play during curing? And again, um, with many of the questions related to temperature and humidity, it depends on the coating used. So always check the coating data sheets. Um, a lot of times the coating data sheets will have guidelines on the hardeners and reducers to be used based on what the current ambient conditions are. So they would give you insight as to you know, how, much, uh, how much of these uh, additives to incorporate in the uh, coating itself during, during application. And that will help you during these times. All right, and the next question we had was, um, how is humidity measured in the booth and what is the typical tolerance range? So um, the type of sensors used uh, typically are temp there, there's fixed sensors that can be mounted right in the system. It could be mounted in the paint booth or in the, in the makeup air supply ductwork or exhaust ductwork. That's typically what we do as far as in a climate controlled booth we have those sensors. So they're fixed, they're rated for the environment in which um, they're located which um, could be a class one div one area, uh, explosion proof area. So they're rated for the environment and they have um, um, accuracies of plus or minus 2% typically. Um, the other way that humidity is measured is many times paint suppliers have uh, handheld devices that they can give, uh, supply you um, to figure out what, uh, 
what the current environment is. So again, you can review that, um, take a look at how that compares to the ideal conditions and determine what additives um, as far as hardeners and reducers to incorporate into your uh, paint mix. Um, the next question that we had was, is there a way to add humidity control to an existing booth? And um, yeah, that's, yes, there is definitely a solution, but it, again, it depends on the climate, um, uh, where you're located, uh, what the existing system configuration is, and defining what specifically you're looking for as far as temperature and humidity window is concerned. So those are, um, those are components of the makeup air system typically that we got to look at. And depending on that configuration, um, we have to evaluate to see if any part of that uh, can be reused or not. Many times, unfortunately, it would require replacing uh, the makeup air component of that system. In summary, if, if um, we were to get uh, the, most in, the most useful information out of this um, presentation, it would be understanding, again, what the technical um, specifications of the paint require. So it's temperature range and humidity range that we're looking for. And um, if, if you're able to give um, Global Finishing Solutions that information, uh, we would evaluate it, work with our sales department, and uh, develop a custom solution for your application. That's all we have today on Climate Control. If you found this video helpful, please like, share, and subscribe.